week, joined by one of Cape Town's favourite sons, uh, needs absolutely no introduction, uh, Alistair Isabel. Good morning. And a very good one to you. Sure, Thank morning, you. morning. Um, we've known one another... Sure. 30 years we said the I was day. thin. Um, <laughs> I was young. I was thin. I was mildly good looking. I mean, it was it was a lifetime ago. Uh, over the course of three decades, I mean, we've we've done all sorts of things. We've we've parted together. We've worked together. We've laughed. We've cried together. We've travelled together. Yes. I mean, in fact, we. Uh, I, I was part of a, a tour of yours to Australia yep. where I emceed some years ago. So uh, it's fair to say we've uh, we, we've got deep history. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, didn't ever think we'd have this discussion, you and I, on the no. radio in all of that time. Um, it's, uh, it's um, and, and I suppose maybe let's start out with, why are you here, Alistair? <laughs> I mean, why are you here? Well, it depends um, at what um, point um, mm. we are speaking of. Why am I here? I'm speaking about mental health and um, my recovery and healing and um, where I found myself and where I'm finding myself now and where I'm going to um, after a failed suicide attempt a couple of weeks ago. All right. Um, and um, I'm, I'm going to ask you the same question, but I'm going to ask it you differently. Yes. So now you've said why you are here, so I'm going to ask why are you here? Because the, the why, I suppose, is is the one thing. But then, then people say, Alistair Isabel, come on. I mean, he's he's so together. He's out yes. there. He's the ultimate showman. I mean, you sat in that same chair just a couple of months ago. And yeah. at that point, life was swimming. You were a fark on TV. Yes. People <laughs> loved you. <laughs> I mean, you remember? It was, yes. yeah, you were, as far as we knew and as far as the world could see, Things were clapping. You you were owning your stuff. You were back. You, in fact, I mean, I think I might even have said it. I've, I've not seen you this vibrant, this together. Yes. And and then a failed suicide attempt. So why are you here? Smoke and mirrors mm. and um, unmasking all of that. Taking the masks off, throwing it away and um, starting to confront, reconcile and understanding exactly who I was and who I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and understanding and reconciling all the mistakes and the realities of my childhood and my adolescence and my adulthood and the madness of this business called show business and the madness of life itself that brought me to a point and the decisions I made and the active um, role that I played in a lot of things that went wrong and accepting it now and, and, and facing it and going, yeah, a lot of it is you. And um, it's time to stand up and also say um, the patriarchal system that we grew up in is an absolute disaster. That men are allowed to cry. Men are allowed to say they are broken. Men are allowed to say, I cannot do this and I cannot provide and I cannot cope and I cannot actually be strong. Um, and, and the decisions that we make that leaves collateral damage, um, sometimes you don't know how to face it, but... Um, particularly being in the public eye, is to actually go, um, yes, I am broken. Mm -hmm. I'm a broken human being and have been for a long, yeah. a long time. The, the, the difficulty, Alistair, and, and I mean, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's somebody who's, who's in the public eye in, uh, in the way that you are. P people look at, at, at what has happened and they say, well... A couple of things, and, and I'm sure you've heard this. He's he's yes. taken the easy way out. Absolutely. Right? So so things have things have failed, and he, he chose the cowardly option. Yes. He tried to end it. So I'm sure you've you've had that feedback, or at some point, I'm sure you would have thought, listen, this is what people are thinking. All right. So yes. so there's that. Right. Uh, the other is um, he's not dealing with stuff that he brought upon himself. Yes. So whatever that is, you chose to be in the industry. You you chose to work with the people uh, that you did. Um, th th they've been failed business ventures uh, along the way. I mean, a, a bit of a, a checkered past, yeah. if one wants to look at it in that way. And and then once again, listen, it got too much. Uh, he decided to to end all of it. Yeah. Um, and then thirdly, which I'm sure you've heard from people, this is just to try and find attention. Absolutely. This, this is an attention-seeking exercise yes. for somebody who loves attention. Yes. So uh, let me let me compartmentalize and answer them in, in a few things. Number one, no, I didn't choose this industry. Mm -hmm. I was an eight-year-old boy and I think that my family, my parents, um, that I had to confront um, as a, an, a, a man 
at my age that they wanted to catapult me out of the socioeconomic gates that I found myself in um, and wanted a better life for me. And the offers that came in were, were really amazing offers and would change and did change my life forever. So I don't, I don't blame them for that. Um, they didn't know any better. Um, so there are three versions of attention. Um, or, or, or suicide attempts. One um, where you take 10 grandpas and phone 40 people. Um, then there's the other that's one. That's looking for attention. That's looking for I mean, attention. That, yes. that, that's the thing, guys. I, I almost killed myself. Yes. In fairness, you didn't. No. I you you took, are you, you're trying to cry out for help, but you're doing it in the wrong way, I suppose. Would that 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 would be that option, right? That would mm. be that one. Yeah. Um, what I did was took over 100... Um, very lethal tablets that I knew was going to kill me um, with and had been drinking the entire day and then another 18 beers once I had um, taken the over 100 tablets knowing that I was going to die um, and hurt myself incredibly badly um, and was found by my daughter and the third one is where you actually succeed um, there's no attention seeking in that I had come to a point where I could not face life anymore um, and having the life that I have had, which was exciting and delightful and, 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 and just amazing experiences, um, I had not confronted the fact that I was a depressive. A depressive. Um, depression is, an, is a feeling of a, a, an experience. Being a depressive is an, is an ill human being. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know that I was ill because that's what we do. We just get on with life and... and not confront our realities and um yes i have had the people say um a few people very very few that that was a coward way of of trying to leave um and leave your disasters behind that mm -hmm. you left and no there's no cowardice in 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 a, a, a suicide um because there's there's a lot of strength that it takes to to act mm -hmm. To get yourself to that point. To, to actually do it. Mm -hmm. To actually unpack those tablets from its cartridges, look at it and let the deafening silence take over you of your reality and the deluge of, of where you find your ill self mm -hmm. and what you have done to others, what you brought upon yourself and say, it's okay they'll be better off without me here. All right, fast forward. I, I, I don't want to delve too much on, on the actual attempt uh, because, well, the record shows you survived it. Yes. How you survived uh, is something else. Yeah. Um, it took all that dancing over the years. <laughs> or, I mean, to swallow all those tablets and, <laughs> and to couple it with alcohol, I mean, that, that's enough to wipe out most people. Yes. Um, so you, you ended up in a hospital and, uh, and were treated there. You had your stomach pumped. I mean, the, the, those details will, will, will be available to, to those who want it, I suppose, uh, further down the line. But, but you wake up in hospital and you think, what? I, I mean, can't at, say what I what And at, I at some point, you at some point you want you want uh, either to be dead, uh, or you want to be in heaven. You you yes. you you kind of like uh, all right. I'm waking up in a better place. I mean, you woke up in a hospital, which which still leaves you needing to confront your reality, right? Well, that's the thing is that waking up, um, um, finding myself looking at myself from an out of body experience and um going so so first of all they don't pump they give you charcoal to drink um, all right and um i laid there with my first thought being oh if mm -hmm. it didn't work and then immediately your brain goes into defense mode and going i have to confront this but i mean at this point you're not lucid right you, you you've are, taken you, lots of of medication coupled with alcohol you yes. you're groggy you i mean you dug drunk apart from being high at the same time yes. yeah but you do think, because I hovered over myself, uh, as I write in, 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 in a book, um, that I, I looked and thought, well, they're trying to revive me. And, okay, cool, I'm gone. And then you realize, nah, bra, taste no pizza. And the men say, you know, fra, fra, and who come and va, and what. And then you've got to confront the reality of having to confront and face everyone. 
to answer the questions that they have um, and will have and go through the process of what you don't know is going to happen. Um, and then you lay there and, and you are constantly monitored and all of a sudden you feel incarcerated. All of a sudden you feel... When van het hy rarig bykom, sy het moes nou skone stront aangevang. And so you get angry, which is called suicide, mm-hmm. um, a survivor's guilt. Um, and were, were you glad at this point? No. no but were you angry. glad you survived? I was because, angry yeah? and I was, I was upset and angry and disappointed. And I was mad at the fact that I did not succeed at mm-hmm. this because I did not want this life anymore and now I had to relive this life again which was an unkind thought to me mm-hmm. why do you think you survived because come on you, you did enough if, if what you're saying is true if, if you swallowed that amount of narcotics if you drank that amount of alcohol to go along with it why do you think you've you, why are you sitting here? I mean, that's enough to wipe out most people. You well, Somewhere I, along the line, there was a survival spirit that kicked in. No, or, not at or all. Or something else that kept, you, that kept you going, that kept you alive. Well, my daughter found me in time for it not to do what it's supposed to have done. Mm-hmm. Um, I was supposed to meet my, my ex-wife um, very early in the morning to um, go and send my son off. And they had called and called and called. And um, she eventually told my daughter to go and see, why is your dad not on? answering his phone um, and at that point um, I had been discovered by I taken to hospital got in the sludge um, charcoal mm-hmm. and why am I here I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to find that out um, because I'm still in an incredibly dark space and um, um, someone asked me the other day and I'm very very open about it would you do it again and I can't answer that um, I can't answer that because I'm still confronting and meeting this new human being that I am now. So there's so there's no sense of relief that you no, survived? I don't feel relief at all. Um, I can't get there at this point because that's not something that I wanted. I, I now am putting one foot in front of the other, living one hour by hour um, and making sense of it all and trying to discover what my purpose, reality, and what my new journey is supposed to be. And you are here telling your story, and it's a very powerful story because you are Alistair Isabel. Um, are, are you hoping that this will open up a, a conversation for men to have? Uh, <laughs> what, what are you hoping to achieve? Well, um, the first thing is, 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 is I've unshackled myself from that kind of, of what people perceive as power that I am Alistair Isabel. Um, but that, that to me um, is just part of the smoke and mirrors that I've um, had over a 40-year career. I don't want to be known as this person that is different to normal people. Um, I'm very normal. And am I? is there an objective to this? No, there was no objective or is no objective because there was no plan for this. Um, what I do now know is that there are so many ill people who have, by virtue of me using my platform and my, my, my persona and public persona is for them to say thank you for telling your story because no one knows that I'm a suicide survivor and um, it allows us to to say it's okay. Um, what I am hoping is that not men only but that people generally will turn out and go thank you. That made me feel the dark space that I am in and, and so if I don't achieve anything in life what i want to achieve is be there with someone who finds himself in the dark night of their soul so so you make the decision you survive at uh, at any point while this is playing out are you thinking of those who are going to be most impacted are, no. are you thinking i mean you've got beautiful children yes they're, 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 there's a circle of people, never mind adoring fans. I mean, that, that, that's fleeting. That comes and goes. You're stopping in the public eye for a while. The fans disappear. So I'm, I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking to those who are near and dear. People you cannot who, think people about People who've that. journeyed with you, family, friends, people who love you, people, who've, people who are your day ones, who've, who've been there. So the dark night of the soul is exactly that, is that you, you, you for a second or two consider all of that and the, the reality of the collateral damage you will leave and the hurt and the pain and all of that. 
But you literally feel that you are going to, as I said earlier, you're going to emancipate them from the stuff that you have brought on negatively to their lives. There's nothing positive about the dark night of the soul. That moment, um, my experience um, and speaking to other survivors is you go through those those questions and 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 the regret of what you know they are going to feel and experience, but what you what you find is that everything goes silent. Everything, even your thoughts. Your thoughts go silent, your feelings are numb. You are in the darkest space that anyone can ever have expressed, explained or or convinced you is possible. Um, so no, it's it's that aspect of suicide um, one could see and feel is selfish. Um, but again, there is no cowardice in, in suicide at all. There's in fact great strength in being able to because your natural instinct is to survive and live mm -hmm. but you 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 are right there at at a point that you do not deserve to belong anymore we're chatting to Alistair Isabel. It's a, it's a powerful conversation. It's one we'll keep going in the next hour. There, there are some dynamics to this story that have yet uh, to be explored. We'll pick it up on the other side of a, a full news, traffic and sports uh, update. But um, I, th I think it's, it's a, a powerful conversation, especially uh, for vulnerable men. Um, who are sitting there bottling it up, women just uh, some of the other with uh, safety in numbers or, or perhaps they're just genetically predisposed to get this stuff out just a lot sooner with men. Oh, it, it's just, uh, it's almost too late when uh, when we discovered that there's a problem. It really, really is. It was almost too late in the case uh, of Alistair Isabel, if I'm listening to his story, speaking um, openly, candidly, honestly with uh, Alistair Isabel, who just a couple of weeks ago, uh, what's the date of your failed suicide attempt? <sighs> I don't remember it, actually. Mm -hmm. It's something that I don't want to remember. Six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, how long are we, do, are um, we talking? More than seven weeks ago, yeah. Okay, so yeah. just just under two months back, um, and and there's a lot of talk. I mean, you've you've uh, you've owned up to it. There was there was yes. infidelity. There was long-standing yes. infidelity. Ultimately, yes. led to uh, the final breakdown of of your marriage. Yes. Uh, which uh, th those in the know, and and I think those who 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 have had dealings in and around you would know was was never an easy marriage. Very long-suffering wife yeah. uh, that that you had, um, and eventually it all just it all came to an end. Just, just Talk us through all of that. I mean, there's talk of a seven-year-long, well, uh, extramarital uh, relationship. Yes, um, and and so there's no there's no point in me doing any of this and talking about it if there's no honesty. Um, I have. Um, I've removed all the dishonest, um, one would say a little bit too late, um, but affairs come with deceit. That's what the reality is of an affair. Um, I, I had a very, very long, incredible relationship with my wife, um, one that also was very challenging with the kind of person that I am um, and the kind of lifestyle that I led. And, and I think um, I'd much rather uh, give the insight to people in, in the book as to how that all unfolded, etc. But... Um, and, and why a book, by the way? I mean, why you know, when people because hear a book and they think money making, they think absolutely. But he's, uh, he's he's in it for the for the money. He's taking he's taking his pain. Maybe he's even manufacturing some of it so that he can sell books. Absolutely, that's that's um, the first thing that people are um, saying to me. But I, do I care? No. After trying to kill yourself, you don't care about what anyone says anymore, because that's what I had to think all my life. Is what is this one going to think? What is that one going to think? Um, and, and my entire life has been um, a journey of judgment. Whether it is before you walk on stage, you're already popping because they think Hitler it likes us. They write the songs. Can I get it back? Your stem is stuck and no one says sing and no one says don't go get the song sing. And so my life has been judged forever. So I don't care what anyone um, thinks. Uh, this is my truth, and um, and I guess during during the the, the clinic um, experience, it was also important for me to understand how cathartic and important it is to write to yourself. This is not a novel. This is not a, a an expose. This is this is me telling people who I actually am. Um, giving them an insight into the life that they think has been wonderful and filled with incredible um, things only. No, my life has been filled with lots of hell, with lots of demons, and being a depressive was never knowing how to deal with it, confront it. Um, and, and 
And on top of all of that, you involve yourself in a multi-year extramarital affair. Yes. I mean, that's... that's I that, didn't choose. That's drinking petrol on a fire. As you said, petrol. Yeah. It's a place in your life. But it's not... It's not mosach. But you don't think that when you fall in love. You don't think that when you having an affair and you you don't think that the affair is going to be longer than a navik chol or a three week, three week, a month, five months, five months, six months, and then is it a year, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And um, I didn't choose it, neither did the person choose to fall in love with a married man. Um, and I didn't choose to... Um, hurt my wife family and and everyone else in the interim of my 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 obvious um decision to continue mm. and be involved in that extramarital affair i think you can appreciate now as much as uh, as much as you're saying you didn't choose in the moment you weren't choosing to do that no, in retrospect that uh, in retrospect I, I think you realize that absolutely was but a choice out of doubt. nobody forces two people to have an affair no not at all um, but no one forces and and no one forces what i experienced um, that i couldn't stop because my life had changed my my want desires needs had changed and and i'm not the first person and won't be the, the last person to have an affair. Um, do I regret it? Absolutely not, because I loved more than one lifetime um, could allow. And, um, and, and I loved the person that I was married to also. But our love had changed. My, my needs had changed. Um, and be very scared to, to admit those things. Um, I regret the deceit and the lies and the continuation of that when I should have just released um, my, my, my marital partner from the, the obvious hurt and, and breaking of the hearts um, and, and all of that. But There's a simple mathematical equation that I'm sure people listening to you now are making. One plus one equals two. You were in a relationship, it failed, therefore you committed suicide. All the other stuff is fluff. The, the uh, inadequacy, the, the, the years-long trauma. Yes. I mean, that, that sort of day-to-day -day humdrum life stuff that we all go through. This was maybe powerful enough uh, my understanding is the person yes. uh, ended the relationship as opposed to you. Yes. Um, and that just sent you over the edge. But well, th th this is a love story gone wrong. You tried to kill yourself. You you're not the first to have done it for love. Without a doubt. Um, but that was not my, my, um, my, my breaking point. What, what, what the leaving of that person um, did was was get me to the edge and, and actually brought all the other abandonment of my life to bear and made me feel even more much of a failure than I already thought I was. Um, did my heart and is my heart still broken? Yes, but I'd also lost everything else um, um, from cars to trucks to equipment to to losing my, my status as one of the most successful producers, etc. in this town. Um, but but having, having gone through that last thing, um, Having fought for something that that I thought was going to be the fairy tale ending, um, actually made me lose everything else. And um, yes, I have a lot of um, after the 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 die berichte wat uit was in terme van die persoon wat saam met my betrokke was in die in die um, uh, in die dolstuk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there's a lot of those questions. Um, is it because of the person? No, I didn't try and commit suicide because of a person. Um, I could never blame someone for wanting to take my life. Yes, there's been people who have done that. Mine was just confronting the reality that my choices and, and that being one of them um, were very, very bad choices. Day by day? I mean, talk to me about yesterday. Talk to me about the day. And tomorrow, because my, my understanding of this, of, of what you're going through, is that it is a slow, almost painful recovery. It, it's, you, you set milestones. Some people set days, others set times of day. So I'm just going to make it through to lunch. And then at lunch, you regroup, regather. Let's do this to supper. And from supper, let's just get to bedtime. Um, I mean, wh where are you I as, as hour you piece? Hour. hour by hour? Mm. Hour by hour, because um, I cannot get through the day because because I I can't because mm -hmm. I just can't, and so surviving an hour, I look back at it and go, okay, you've gotten through that. Let's do the next hour, 
and um, confronting um, having to build a life now um, where you've got to um, admit to everything in your life, including the affair, including the, the, the mistakes one has made, including um, the survivor's guilt, including trying to build and rebuild a relationship with an adult daughter who who cannot understand why would you want to do that to to us as your family why would you go and seek love somewhere else were we not good enough um looking at the heartbroken um sorrowful eyes angered filled eyes and bitterness of your ex-wife going i warned you about this mm. Without bitterness or or they hurt you, isn't it? This is what I warned you about while you were denying it, while that. you were lying, while you were being deceitful, and that's what an affair is. Um, and so I can't change that, um, but hour by hour and trying to make sense of what it is I'm supposed to do now, moving forward. So yeah. all I do now is write. Mm -hmm. All right, your. Your immediate family, uh, where are they in all of this? Because I mean, come on, this this impacts them. They they almost lost an ex-husband. They almost lost a father. Uh, there, there's there's your I don't want to say your extended family, but I mean they are siblings. Um, it's uh, you're an uncle to people. I mean, they how are they? Because as much as you you took a decision which you thought would free them of everything, you've you've brought an incredible burden on completely to a whole network of people. But I'm not. I'm not my emotional capacity doesn't allow me to 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 take that on mm -hmm. um that's for them to deal with my extended family my immediate family of course i'm i'm trying to to create a different um a, a, a different reality for them um there's obviously psychology for them and and having to deal with it um verbally and having to confront their friends and their um their social life where the embarrassment the the all of those things are are because of my actions and my public um raconteering of it and um aswa as hectic madaswar in a kanidi varit for anari that's your truth absolutely